and if you gave you in your lip, it's a fist fight. Uh, ah, yeah. true. He would take you outside. He, oh, he'd take you outside. <laughs> and you, it was you guys saw him take. He would take people outside and actually get. Oh no, and, and beat the shit out of them. I will be forever the myth. Oh, yeah. You're the king of kings, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken, so to speak. If George ever saw you, if George set you up on a program, he came in and saw you doing something that wasn't on that program, he would ask you, he would kick you out. <laughs> if you dropped a weight, George would kick you out. Yeah. You, 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 I don't know if you remember this, Tony. George <laughs> would kick you out if you didn't have the right workout apparel on. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. George would kick you out if he was in a bad mood. If you make it noise and making banging weights together. Oh, if you bang weights or, or make noise or just whatever. He goes, and you got one out. more time, one more time. <laughs> He'd warn you first. He'd give you a warning. A warning. <laughs> one warning. And he would throw you out. Here's your money back. <laughs> he would write you a check. <laughs> he would write you a check. <laughs> and give you your money back. That's no joke. I've watched George throw more people out than I could count with a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and if you gave you in your lip, it's a fist fight. Uh, ah, yeah. true. He would take you outside. He, oh, he'd take you outside. And you, guys, it was on. you guys saw him take. He would take people outside and actually get. Oh no, people. and beat the shit out of them. Oh, they do not. And when the police would come, they trained at George's, so they were friends with him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we never got in trouble. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. George, George had one misfortune. He he going to throw this guy out, but he didn't know the guy was a karate expert. Oh, you I remember you remember that story? Yeah. He got his ass kicked. He got his ass whipped. Really? <laughs> <laughs> George took him outside. He got him beaten. <laughs> George got the shit beat out of him. Yes. Wow, no shit. I mean, and, and, I, I, go ahead, George Tony. Get back into his office, close the door. <laughs> I mean, I, with George personally, I had a love-hate relationship with him. I loved the guy. I mean, truly loved the guy. He, I mean, he, if it wasn't for him, we may not be having this conversation. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying here, likewise. I mean, it, it was a love-hate and fear relationship. <laughs> exactly. And I was a bully kid that escaped bullying through bodybuilding, and I came back to the bully again, <laughs> right. which was kind of right. George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but living in the house with George, this is a whole different story. You imagine. know, it's funny because he put me in, one, he had a beautiful home and he put me on the, I can't remember, I think it would have been, I don't remember what side of the house it was to give you like north, south or whatever, but his kids were on the opposite side with his family. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of in a wing by myself. And I used to sit on the edge of bed and thinking, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> I really did. And we'd wake up in the morning, we'd go to the gym, I'd ride with him, and we'd work during the day, do this, do that. And, I mean, during the day, you see George, depending on what mood he was in, if he got a phone call, right, that could change everything. <laughs> I, I, I kid you not. Did they ever get like a, a lot of famous bodybuilders from around the country? Did they come into George's gym just to train there or if they were in town? Yeah, so, we had yeah. Dave Johns. Okay. We had Mike Mincer come in. That's where I really learned how to train. And this yeah. is a funny story. I'm going to say now that we say Mike Mincer, Mike Mincer came and did a seminar. Okay. And, and I have photos of this. And you can find photos here and there. He's got a George Turner's gym t shirt on. Mm hmm. Right. He's doing curls. He's doing this. He's doing a seminar in a white outfit. OK, I've seen those pictures. Yeah. OK, you know what I'm talking about? I was at yeah. that seminar and okay. I trained with Mike after that seminar. Mike stayed about an extra 10 days or so. Hmm. And George said, that's the brightest 
My thing. This is the way he said it. I'm going to show you. That's the brightest motherfucker I've ever met. He's the coolest fucking guy. He's so smart. I said, George. I said, George. What he's teaching us goes against everything you said. And he went, fuck. He goes, <laughs> fuck. Hey, cops, I ain't the fuck that fuck. And he walked away. <laughs> no, this is the truth. Because he was talking about high Heavy intensity duty. training three days a week. Yeah. And George, George had to get six days a week. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he's telling me what a genius he was and how smart he was. I said, but how come he is? His, t- his training goes against everything that you say. And George true. thought about it, and oh, he snapped. <laughs> oh, he, snapped. he talked to me for a, uh, like a day and a half. <laughs> I kid you not, guys. I kid you not. <laughs> I mean, there's, some, there's some crazy stories. There's another story where this power lifter came to South County. This guy, I don't know who this guy was. I couldn't remember his name. But this guy bench pressed like 600 pounds back then, yeah. or close to. Yeah. There was like five plus on each side. Yes. And George walked over, seen him load up the bar and said, what are you doing? He goes, what do you think you're going to do with that? He goes, I'm going to bench it. And he had another guy with him. And George said, oh, let me see. And the guy benched it. One rep, good and slow. Yeah. Good form, right? Yeah. And George looked at him. He goes, well, what do you think, George? He goes, we got arms like thumbs. I guess anybody could do that. <laughs> <laughs> so he insulted the guy. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, here's, here's a funny story. And I'm trying to remember all the George Tur- Turner stories. He was doing squats once, right? And this, this is, he was coming back. You know, George competed in the 87 AAU Mr. USA. Okay. I think he did quite well. I mean, for his age, he was over. I can't remember what age George was, but I mean, he was well above 50. Yeah. And he, I think he took, he placed in the top six or seven. Wow. I and can't remember exactly. We can look this up and I, I, I forget to look this stuff up. But he said, hey, guys, come here. We're at the squat rack. He's facing it. There's the mirror. He said, I don't want, he told the gym this. Nobody walk behind me. I don't want to see anybody in the mirror while I squat, <laughs> right? So that means why he came, put the bar on his back and came back here. He didn't want to see you behind him, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> no, this is true. And he got the bar, came back, got set, and soon he, soon he was doing four or five reps. Some guy stuck his head, some <laughs> idiot. Stuck his head and George saw him in the mirror and he walked it in and racked it and he exploded. He threw the guy out, told him to never come back. <laughs> this is a true story. Oh, God. There's some crazy things. I'll tell you the craziest story. This is the craziest George story I have. His son, Matt. And I got to know his kids a little bit because I lived in the house with them. Mm-hmm. But it was funny because I never saw him. His daughter was a nice lady. Nice girl. I mean, she wasn't a lady. She was, they, they were all kids at the time. Yeah. His wife was very nice. And I mean, I remember sitting at the breakfast table with them. And if something wasn't right, he'd throw it at her. He hit her in the back of the head with a baked potato that wasn't done. Oh, at dinner shit. once. Jeez. I know that. I know that story. Oh, Kid yeah. you not. Kid you not. He was, and he did it in restaurants. Oh my god! My oh, story. Ta- the, my story from the restaurant the next door. The restaurant next door. The baked ta- baked potato was not the way he wanted. He walks away and he threw it and he hit her in the back of the head. Yes, he did. And he did <laughs> the same thing with his wife. <laughs> no, the food wasn't right. He, he, <laughs> it was like a frisbee. The plate. <laughs> oh you gotta love george yeah yeah, yeah. And, th- and there's one time he, but before he started getting ready for the show he said i want you to help me he said this to me to me i want you to help me with my diet remind me not to eat anything that i shouldn't i said, <laughs> I said okay george i came down 
got out of the shower in his house, came down the stairs. He's eating pancakes. I said, George, what about your diet? He went, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> he slammed it. <laughs> and he took a jump, dude. <laughs> Kid you not. <laughs> the story I'm going to tell you now is the best story I have. This is the best Turner story there is. I mean, he, he I've seen him beat up a guy for a parking space. No. I can't remember. No, oh, no, I do. He <laughs> did. The guy beat him to the parking space. And George says, hey, I was going to park there. He goes, well, I guess I beat you too. I guess it's up. I'll beat you. And George <laughs> punched the shit out of him. <laughs> did you not? <laughs> this is the best story, though. This is this oh, is this is the God. one that counts the most. His son, Matt, was probably like I think he was in middle school, 12 or 13. And he was on the football field and he passed out and they found out the ambulance came, took him to the hospital. We find out he had a heart condition, right? So this kid had to have open heart surgery. Mm. Now here it goes. This is the good part. George comes in and tells us about it. And of course he's super depressed, right? And George is crying, right? And we're sitting around and we're kind of going, oh, shit, what do we say? Yeah. Myself, Cliff Coons, probably Jimmy Seeger, and, and maybe another guy or two. And uh, remember the big guy, Joe? Yes. How many of you remember Joe? Joe, yes. The big Italian guy. The Italian guy, right. Oh, yeah. He was still there at that time. Wow. And so George... Tells us about his heart condition. He has to have open heart surgery. And we're real quiet. George is crying. And then suddenly, the next day or two, George becomes a born-again Christian. <laughs> oh, I'm not joking. And all of a sudden, we're having a prayer circle in the gym. Right? Hold I kid you not. For Matt. And I don't know what to say to George. I'm living in the house and I'm around this the whole time. And I'm just, I'm a kid. I don't know what to say. Right. Right. And uh, George says, I don't want any more profanity in my gym. I said, we said, yes, sir. Yeah. yeah we won't, we won't curse anymore, George. <laughs> and I mean, he became really, he was reading the Bible while he was in his desk, mm -hmm. in his office. And in the evenings we had a prayer circle for Matt this went on for about six weeks or so. Wow. Once Matt got the okay that he was going to live, right? Mm -hmm. And he was past, you know, passing away from this particular uh, disorder. Mm -hmm. George went right back to where he was. <laughs> he goes, hey, cocksuckers, you should see Matt. He fucking cocksucker. Hey, that motherfucker. He's, he's a shit. This is this my kid, my kid. Hey, he's well past it. I said, George, I said, George, I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, what about the profanity? He goes, fuck that guy. What's wrong with you? It was business as usual right after that. I kid you not.